Hey everyone, my name is Dara Alston. This is Dear Hallmark, where we nerd out and review all the new Hallmark movies that the Hallmark Channel brings to us throughout the year. So, if you hear noise in the background, I do have the heater on. It is a bit cold in my room, so I have the heater on. I'm trying to think, should I bring my cup of tea over? Is this a tea conversation? Hold that thought, I'm going to get my cup of tea. Use this time to grab your cup of tea as well. I am sipping on an herbal tea provided by Tezo or Tazo. It is their Juniper, what is it? The Rocky Mountain Foragers edition. So it's like Juniper, mint, and honey. Really, really good. But we have some things to talk about, no? We have quite a bit to talk about. Um, so we're not going to do a complete wrap up of Spring Fling. That is its own separate video. I have my own thoughts about the totality of Spring Fling in general. But what I am going to talk to you about today is right in front of me. The names of the actors and actresses will be at the bottom in terms of, in the description box, in terms of who are the, the leads. Um, mm. <laughs> mm. y'all. Y'all saw my review for As Luck Would Have It. You know what I was feeling, what I was expecting, what I was hoping for. My expectations were dang in the stratosphere. And then I watched this movie and I'm like, Ugh. this movie had incredible potential, incredible potential. But I think somewhere between the writing and the directing, it just kind of fell short in terms of how lines landed and even the quality of the lines in and of themselves, I just think something wasn't clicking for me. I do think though that there, again, there was there, there was incredible potential, even for the chemistry between the two leads, because I could see it. How the trailer of this thing looked better than the whole dang movie. I don't get it. And it was a trailer that sucked me in. Whoever edited the trailer, kudos to you and good on you because dang it, it made me so excited for this movie. Yet when I watched it, I was like, wah, wah, wah. So what is this movie? Let's talk about it. We have Carly or CJ Mason. I like CJ Mason, but Carly, um, who's a workaholic bridal stylist and she wants you to know, no, she doesn't plan the weddings. She styles the bridal party. Don't get the two confused because we are, oh wait, I actually have hair to do it now. We are not the same, okay? She, she did one of those for you. Um, so she is a bridal stylist who's, book and, who's booked and busy. And her best friend is like the general manager or overall manager for this lodge, hotel, resort. I don't even know what to call it, but it was that's all I know. Her best friend's name is Sydney and she's like, a wedding got moved up and so she finally has a weekend off because she's booked. She wants you to know she's booked for the next year, every weekend for the next year. And she hasn't taken a vacation for a year. Now I can, I can understand that. She hasn't taken a vacation in over a year and a half. I, I, can, I can attest to that. I'm about to go on vacation myself and it's been literally almost two years since I've been on vacation. So I can totally attest to that. How whatsoever, she gets to the lodge or whatever that her best friend is manager over and all her college floor mates are there for a wedding. And apparently she's the only person in the building who wasn't invited. <laughs> can we talk about awkward? Um, and so we see Chef Nick, cue our male lead who wants to experiment and really offer this sense of fusion, of Filipino fusion food to the, the lodge. We're just gonna call it a lodge, to the lodge. And the head chef, the chef de cuisine, is like, I don't want none of what you got. All right, buddy, when you become head chef, you make those decisions. But until then, my, my good sir, you're gonna listen to what I have to say, which is a bunch of nothing because I'm just here to let you know that you'll never be good enough. <laughs> that was the head chef. And so um, the chef Nick then sneaks out these empanadas that he wants to test. And that's how chef Nick and Carly kind of meet. Um, 
And here's my biggest discrepancy between the trailer and the movie. The trailer gave off the idea that Nick and Carly were already good enough friends for him to try to want to help her get into the good graces of this guy she used to have a crush on in college named Matt, who is a fuddy-duddy. I mean, this dude is eight bags of sautéed spinach with no salt. You hear me? So she's trying to get this dude to, to, to throw her some play. And Chef Nick is watching this as they develop feelings. And here's another thing. I feel like, and this is where me and my, my friend who watched it with me, we kind of disagreed on, in a sense, I felt that there wasn't enough, there still wasn't enough grounds for me for an attraction to be had by the two leads. I wanted there to be more. Um the awkward camera angles of her touching his arm of him touching her chin because she broke out in highs because she had sesame i'm just like huh? it just wasn't enough for me for them to develop an attraction for one another um and y'all i just felt like they i just felt like it didn't live up to the hype unfortunately like, it was all of this pomp and circumstance, and they want you to believe, like, all of this, but at, at the core, it's just like, no. Now, I will say this. The colors, the, the, the quality of the filming, um, the architecture, the decor, beautiful. That's something I've seen that has, that is excellent through and through with these Hallmark movies. They know how to pick some colors. It was just a beautiful array of pastels and I loved it. I loved the foodiness. Like I'm a foodie, so I loved the um, the foodie nature of this movie. Dang it, it made me want some empanadas, okay? Um, and I loved the, the semi-focus of Filipino culture, which is a people group and culture group that you don't hear talked about a lot in in media in general and i thought that that was really really cool um but yo i <laughs> i was ugh, man, i wanted more i wanted more so i'm giving this movie a smooth and healthy and crunchy 2.75 crowns <laughs> i can't give it the full three because I don't think it's better than as luck would have it. And here's my reason why. Ireland. <laughs> Who can compete with Ireland? Nobody. <laughs> so I... Oh, this wrap up is going to be interesante. Muy interesante. This spring fling wrap up. Now, here's the thing that's baking my noodle at the moment. So, our next movie that we have premiering this coming Saturday, starring Cindy Busby and Tim Ross, they're shipping us off to Australia in a movie called Hot Down Under. And um, uh, the premise is she's a small town cook who inherits something and in Australia and then she meets the guy and then they fall in love blah blah um apparently y'all let me know if y'all heard this through the grapevine this movie was supposed to be a part of their summer nights lineup and they pushed the joint up to this is giving me fit for a prince vibes where it's not a part it's not a like fit for a prince wasn't a, officially a part of love ever after but it should have been. Same with this one. This one isn't a part of Spring Fling, but I feel like, why are they showing it? Like, it looks like it belongs in summer, in the Summer Nights lineup. They should have just kept it in May and just had us, you know, chilling and kind of really taking in all of the 15 movies we've had so far this year. Because we've had Taking a Shot at Love, um, a Winter Getaway, Two for the Win, um, Snow Kiss, Something About the New Year with Michael Rady and the other uh, girl, um, Playing Cupid, Beverly Hills Wedding, Chasing Waterfalls, I know I'm doing this out of order, um, Right in Front of Me, 
it was always you one perfect wedding um as luck would have it i know i'm missing something from love ever after don't go breaking my heart um i'm missing something from love ever after because they there was four movies playing cupid beverly hills wedding it was always you that is, you know that movie wasn't that great oh I, I know i'm missing something but either way out of the 15 movies we had i think we deserve a break because <laughs> i still got some uh, movies on my dvr i need to catch up with okay that's what i'm gonna be doing on my vacation hello but um yes yeah, so i will be doing a wrap up for you guys a spring fling wrap up and Ooh, man oh man i might just do the wrap up for instagram since we have or it will be on my instagram first before i put it up on youtube um since we have hearts down under for me to review this coming saturday but nonetheless y'all already know hallmark academy i submit to you my review for right in front of me i I was kind of disappointed, to be completely honest. But you know what? I will watch it again because of the food and the decor. That's what I will watch it again, full on. The acting, the actual plot, nah. But ugh, again, this is a movie that had the potential outweighed the actual execution of this movie. Like I just think it was executed poorly. So, Neither of in any in either event. Um, thank you so much for watching this episode of this episode. Thank you so much for watching, dear Hallmark. Um, be sure to leave me a comment as to what you thought of this movie. Am I bugging? Because if this is your favorite, I genuinely thought this was going to be another. It was always you. I was like, oh, so they aren't going to wait till Christmas to bring us another. It was always you. But here we are. So, you guys let me know. Again, be sure to follow Dear Hallmark on Instagram so that you will be the first ones to see the wrap-up video that I'll do, kind of giving my summation of Spring Fling. Um, and then, of course, there's going to be a Summer Nights preview because we have Hearts Down Under and Sweet Carol. We'll talk about that in the wrap-up, y'all. I'll talk to y'all in the next video.